Boom. Yeah, we're live. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Well, welcome, Carter. Thank you, sir. I'm not yeah. sure how um, professional yeah. this should be since we Dude, know each other. I don't know. It's, it has to be very professional. Use a lot Thank of- Thank you, Austin. Today. I appreciate your time today. I, I mean, we should probably podcast. bow on- yeah. um, I always bow. I bow. I bow to everyone I meet, so it's- I mean, well, for a while there, when me and Trent and Tim were actually taking karate, you know, what were we taking? Mm-hmm. Jeet Kune Do. Everywhere we would go, it was weird because they, like, ingrained this habit into us. We mm-hmm. would, like, subtly, like, bow. You'd be like, oh, thank you, sir. And then back. You would, I actually like, remember you talking back, about bow. this. I remember you like, talking about this. It feels like you're giving some kind of, like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, you're actually giving them a little bit more honor. But then yeah. you, like, look from the other side and you're like, Does this dude just bow this, like, white dude in a coffee shop just bow to me and say thank you? Like, I think okay. I just got look, all right. Well, uh, that's what are you drinking any coffee? What'd you have to no no coffee right now? Oh, I should have got it. It's this newer coffee that one of the um coffee shops around me um has. What I love about where I live is like the coffee shop I always go to. Yeah. Um normally I go there later in the afternoon, but in the morning I kinda like to stay home and, and make my own cup, mostly just because yeah. it's part of like the morning routine now of like making your own thing. I don't know. It's it's weird how it's almost like how some people will wake up and uh, meditate or, you know, I'll do those yeah. things too, or how people talk about with exercise, you know, exercising in the morning, one of the benefits is like it sets you up with a win for the day. Um, so I kind of like the, or, or, or I guess the better example actually would be Tim Ferriss when he talks yeah. about making the yep. bed. I can't remember the guy. So it's like, that's your first win. I, ca- I do that as well, but I also like to make the coffee because it's almost yeah. like it's something that I create. Um, and it's yeah. so small, but like, it's, it's this thing it's that now it's, you know, I've created this thing for me. So is those rhythms. So like uh, a lot of the monks are like Alan Watts talks about a lot. The more that you do things that are rhythmic, that's why like chanting and all these mantras are like tied in all the religious elements. The more often you get like tuned into that mind state. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm the same. I mean, Seth Godin brews, like makes his own beans, roasts them, brews them, doesn't drink coffee. Really? Yeah. It's just a ritual thing. That's interesting. That's funny. Well, I make it. I, I don't uh, roast my own beans, but I um, get them and I absolutely do drink it. That, that's for sure. It's yeah, I got a little Ethiopia right now, natural. Nice. Yeah, see, I have to, I have to limit myself because I'm, I like, it's with anything. It's even that way with alcohol at times. Like I have to be careful. Like whatever I have in front of me, I'm yeah. going to be consuming the whole thing. And totally. so like with like coffee, it's just like, it's not going to be like, I, I enjoy it and stuff, but like if someone kept putting coffee in front of me i was gonna, i'm gonna keep drinking it yeah and just keep going so i kind of have to like set limits naturally that's why i like making it you make one cup you make that's two true. cups whatever it is but then mm-hmm. like that's all you make you know and then you're that's good. True. Yeah. so okay so let's dive into carter's story carter used to be 305 pounds let's see the tattoo what? oh yeah it's i don't know if it's gonna it's like a mirror five is that yeah, impact yeah. font Impact mine. It's actually, I think this is Roboto. Roboto. Ooh, if I remember Roboto if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, so Trent McCloskey's normally the font guy. Carter is now combating him in that. Yeah, yeah. In that they both are like, Architect's daughter, this, back. And I'm like, Architect's Over daughter. Here, like, I do. I would, okay, if, I could, so. if I could go back, I, I like the stamp <laughs> of this tattoo, but I've, I've thought about rope, uh, like Architect's daughter, maybe with like a, a, a slight percentage, squeeze, yeah. like a little squeeze, maybe not as wide. I don't know. What, dude, since Trent's been getting me on that, that spacing with letters and he's been getting me on Architect's Daughter, I'm like, I don't even know where my life's going. It can change, it can change the entire look of it. I'm going to literally, I'm going to be hoarding fonts. You're going to be like, where's Austin? And I have like four of those like mini t- four terabyte hard drives like lined up and I'm like, okay, this is all the Sans fonts. This is all <laughs> fonts. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm normally uh, with fonts, I'm, I'm pretty picky, but. Uh, I don't get that intense. I mean, it shows good. So, okay. That actually leads into how um, basically, because you're one of the pioneers of those fitness infographics, but Carter's story starts a long time before that. So let's go back to like when you were 305 pounds and what happened since then. Because we meet along the way, but I don't want to, don't want to go far yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll kind of try to make do the condensed story. Then like you kind of come in there. It's almost like a, this is like a, it's like a two, two old, two old friends. Yeah. Tell, tell them the tale <laughs> of, of, of our story. So, um, but yeah, so, um, like you said, uh, you know, 
all throughout my life, I've kind of struggled with weight. I was never the super, super overweight kid, so it was never an issue, but I always was pudgy. Um, and then in high school, my freshman year is really when they started to pack on weight. And looking back, there were all kinds of things. I think I've narrowed it down to being like whenever my parents got a divorce, yeah. whenever my freshman year, which like looking back, it's so funny because people <laughs> will talk about how like, like everyone's so naive to their own problems sometimes. Yeah. And other people oh, are yeah. like looking from the outside in going, um, like, like that's obviously the issue, right? But whenever you're living in the moment, you don't notice it. So that's why it's so weird for me. Cause even thinking back to it, like I even remember being okay with everything. Like yeah. I was okay. I was well, cool. Dude, it's, it's the whole, um, did you ever read stumbling upon happiness? I've heard of it. I haven't, I haven't so they it. take, essentially he just compares happiness levels and he said two can join twins. that can only eat birthday cake. It's like their 10 is like eating birthday cake. It's like the best thing ever. Yes. Yeah. Whereas like the person like you, let's say skydiving is your 10 birthday cakes a six on your 10 scale. But let's say you open them up. They would be like, holy crap, that birthday cake is nothing compared to what I could do, but they can't. So they are at peak happiness. So it's probably like a similar mind state to what you're. Well, that, and I think that it was just so like, out of the blue and so against everything that I was used to in my life. Cause I had a very mm -hmm. stable family. And the whole thing is like, they didn't even argue. That was the crazy part. It was like, there was no bickering. I wasn't used to any conflict or anything. Yeah. Um, punishment wasn't even a thing in my house. Right. And so it was just this weird thing. So I think honestly, I just suppressed a lot of it. It yeah. must've been what happened. And then obviously turning to food and it didn't help that, you know, my entire, uh, not my immediate family as much. Cause my brothers and, and, and dad and my, my mom are actually like, naturally kind of skinny and never really struggled yeah. with their weight but like my extended family like my aunts and uncles and, and cousins everyone struggles with their weight right and everyone has like type 2 diabetes and and heart disease and stuff like that and so um i kind of just took after that and oh. started using food as probably you know as the emotional crutch and that's whenever i went from probably like you know mid 200s up to you know 300 pounds and probably yeah. like a year it, it happened pretty quick and that's so, yeah um, that's a lot. yes yeah it, around, that was around your pig wrestling days that was um right post right post uh taking pigs to the fair um doing all that everyone's just so confused right now about <laughs> the, the pigs I took pigs to 4-H and I was a reserve grand champion all right I'm a I'm a I'm a fair legend I'm a fair can, legend can you do the noise I can't not anymore I lost it I I lost the lost the noise it's it's somewhere in there maybe one day it, it'll, it'll come back out it'll come back I've lost it for now um uh, but yeah so, so, so okay that you got up to 305 yeah. in a year from mid 200s low 200s something like that boom yeah. the stick breaks what goes on so a lot of things so it's funny is like i never really thought about my weight until um you know and even like you know i was even experiencing a lot of the negative health effects mm -hmm. of being overweight like with you know just like heavy breathing i was having like not night not like painful like heart attack pains but like i was having chest pains breathing issues yeah. breathing issues couldn't sleep all, all this stuff um but what's so funny is like what initially got me started with losing weight was um, every 16 year old kid guy knows, knows this, right. Um, there was a girl and she, I got friend zoned. It was just terrible. Like if you looked up the definition of friend zone in the, uh, in urban dictionary, there's me just smiling, right there, <laughs> or some, this, you know, whatever. And so right outside those lines. Yeah. yeah. And that was like the first time. Cause the problem was I, I, I was very social and like no one ever, made really made fun of me for my way because I was popular in my school because it was a smaller school and, and I was like one of the in the group of the popular kids so it was just never really a thing that I thought about um until then and uh I just remember like that night like being so like like high school heartbroken right yeah. because like I was like she doesn't like me like and I thought she didn't uh I remember like going outside and like running sprints up and down the hill and um I started like doing all kinds of crazy research Dude, like, you I had like my, you had a Tony Robbins moment I did. I seriously did. It was Someone's like running uh, out there, coughing up blood. Carter's sprinting up the hill. Like, why won't you love me? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. I was screaming that actually at the top of my <laughs> lungs. Everyone's just like, what, is what were you listening there? to? I don't think I was. I think I was just listening to like my own my own <laughs> tears or something. I was. I was just out there doing it, man. It was. It, it was weird. Like, and it's so funny how I started like reading about like on bodybuilding.com about what I needed to do to like lose weight and do all this. And, um, I, you know, in the course of a few months, like I lost a lot of weight very, very quickly. Um, and then looking back, you know, now knowing what I know, I mean, no duh, like I was yeah. from not doing anything and like overeating like crazy to like, you know, I, I was one of those people who was 
I guess like insane enough or, or, you know, driven enough, crazy enough to like be able to do all, the, all of these things and like totally mm-hmm. neglect everything else in their life. And it helped that I was a high school student, didn't have kids didn't have a job, didn't really have anything else going on. So like, I just made this my entire focus and yeah. you know, it's six months in that period of time, I lost probably close to a hundred pounds in probably six to eight months. I mean, it was fast. Yeah. I lost all the weight really quickly. So those um, were like your first transformation, not the pictures that get stolen by all the bodybuilders. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I can't, I don't know how to stop those, but, uh, to stop, if anyone ever sees like full disclosure, if anyone ever sees a picture of me being <laughs> marketed to sell like testosterone boosters, it is, I do not, uh, endorse it, but there's nothing I can do. Literally. I've tried everything. It's like, it's like one of those things. It's like, it's already been passed around so yeah. much. It's like leaked. It's you like, gotta do, stopping it. you gotta like discredit in some way, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 I don't even worry about it. Cause now most people who follow me, Dude, see you should put lives. up your testosterone test. You just got and be like, see natty. Yeah. See exactly. Right. That's very natural. Very average, <laughs> very average levels of testosterone everyone. So please don't, please don't be uh, accusing me of anything. I know looking at me, I look like I'm, you know, busting Dude, up the seams. I thought you were on trends. I thought you were on trend. I thought you were on GH. Honestly, oh, I'm on all. handshake almost broke my hand. It's what I do, man. It's, you know, it's, I get that all the time, you know, with these, with this medium size t-shirt and, <laughs> and everything it's, it's, you know, this beard, it, this is absolutely it's a testosterone beard. beard, correct? Right. Well, um, that, I mean, so, okay. So you're getting closer to the point at which we meet, but so you drop a yeah. hundred pounds after the bodybuilding stuff. Boom. Yes. So, so that all happened at once. And, and the thing about what people ask is like, did you get the girl or whatever? And like, um, what's funny is, you know, after a couple of months, I wasn't as motivated by that anymore. And it was kind of one of those things where I had seen these results. So I just kept pushing through. Right. And, and so I lost pretty much all the weight I struggled with. And then even, you know, started gaining muscle in the process. I just kind of adopted that fitness lifestyle, which a lot of people can probably yeah. relate to, yeah. right. Of like getting addicted to going to the gym, working out, doing all that. And so, um, by my junior year of high school, of high school, I was pretty much like I had lost it. So like I basically gained all of it and lost all of it. And um, junior year was the same. Then senior year was was very similar. Um, and then I went off to college. And um, what's funny about college is, you know, when I left for college, I had already I was already at like you know my ideal body, right? I had lost yeah. all my weight and stuff, and so I was already done with that entire weight loss journey. Um, but what was so funny is college was sort of probably the hardest time of my life. Um, and, and now looking back, um, it, I think it was all due to the fact that I kind of lost my identity, right? Um, yes. in high school, like I didn't really have to develop one because everyone knew me as the weight loss person, right? Carter's yeah. lost all this weight and it was this thing and that was just what I was, right? And then I went to college, no one knew that I did that unless they like asked me or saw a picture on Instagram or something. No one knew what I had done before that. And, and that really kind of like made me think about, you know, who am I kind of question. Yeah, right? like, seriously. Um, yeah, That's, and so, I mean... Yeah. They need cl- like the thing is people don't realize they go to college and like the the movies portray like the nerd in high school who becomes the cool kid in college. Yeah. But like these it, depending on where you're going, right? Cuz I know Michigan State was 40,000. How big was yours? Couple thousand? Uh, yeah, I and I couldn't even tell you. I know yeah. it was a, it was enough to be a university. And um, you get you get college. lost in that though. That's like yeah. a sea of people. So like if you're not finding those people, of course you lose yourself and nowhere along normally the 18 years that it took you to get there. Do you ever learn anything about how to actually get in touch with who you are or be confident? There's so, I mean, it's the last. Oh yeah. It's, it's, system. yeah. And that's like a whole other can of worms. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, but regardless, that's kind so of you're finding yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, um, I did that for a couple of, uh, like a couple, like the first year I just stayed in my dorm the whole time. And then, um, I started working for my stepdad and, and living in an apartment and still going to school full time. And it was also uh, around this, this period where I started to, um, get more into, um, sort of the business sphere, but looking at like fitness professionals who are like yeah. blogging and stuff and getting into that. And, um, you know, as you know, you kind of joined a course that, that went over, uh, sort of how to start your own blog and stuff. And that's sort of where we all met just online in a Facebook group. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the, the little situation where we got the opportunity to, um, move down for an internship, um, to work with the company, um, in the fitness industry. And that's sort of where we met. That's kind of where our, yeah. our, our journeys crossed. Yeah. I'm sure that you've probably talked about your journey some and your own stuff, but that's sort of where we met. And, and honestly, that was the first time where I felt like I was finally finding a direction. Right. Yeah. Um, and that I was like, Oh, okay. Like I, I was starting to identify who I was and um, 
really. So, so it was me and you and two other guys. And like, that was the first time I'd ever really been submerged in like a group of guys. Right. And, and not only guys, but like four guys that were pretty forward thinking, right. With, yeah, with what exactly. they were wanting to do, just the nature of how we met and, and everything. And, and, you know, four people moving down the floor to drop out of college, like you know, you're going to have some people <laughs> who are ambitious about something. And so, um, those and, and even though I was only there for six months, like the, that time I was there was very transformative, like almost yeah. more than my high school and college years combined. Like mm. it all happened in the six months. That's why it's funny looking back because it was only six months, but it felt I like two years I was there. Yeah. So, so Carter was there for six months. We were there for about two full years. That's crazy. Um, to think about. I think you came down three months before we left and yeah. we were like, dude, we were like together last week. Cause it was like, it's so, it's weird, right? Yeah. You get in these places where it's like a time travel mode. Mm. And I know you had this when you went back, but it's sometimes in life, you like end up doing the same thing over and over again, or you're in such a situation where like all this time goes by, but it seems like it's literally the same time. That's why like, uh, like, uh, Steven Pinker or no, no, no. I was reading, um, war of art. Uh, yeah, he, w- he was talking about how his mind is the exact same as when he was a kid, but he's like 75. He's like, this doesn't change, but like everything else does. So the perception of time often is so like weird, but so that's what we got down in Florida, six months, Carter figures out what he wants to do. Well, that's, that's generous to say, I I would say, I I think I figured out what I, I I knew where I wanted to go towards what I wanted to move towards. And I felt like, I had to just do it because I felt like up to that point, cause here's the whole thing is like, I could have stayed down there and done this at the side. Yeah. Right. But I felt like up to that point in my life, I had spent so much time conceptualizing what it is I want to do and trying to figure out that because this was the first time I had this strong drive to like, it was the first time in my life I'd ever felt so strongly about doing something. Yeah. Like it was just this, it was so weird. It's like, I had to go, like, it was just this thing. Like it didn't make any yeah. sense. And, and, and even looking back, I mean, it's still, doesn't make sense like that decision you know nine nine times out of ten probably would be the best decision but i just knew from my past experiences and what i needed to do i I just did it right that was like my in the heroes uh in the hero's journey that's the um i mean i should know this that's the call uh, architect the call right the call the the, against all odds or whatever um, wait can i be the princess yeah, you of course you can. Hell yeah, of course you can because I'm still, I'm still, I'm still. It, we come back because at the end of the story, I come back and I save you. Exactly. Was, right. I don't know. Um, but uh, no, but yeah, it's uh, that was kind of that calling, right? Of something I felt internally I had to do, even though everyone else was saying it probably wasn't the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that that happened, and then um, really at that point in the story, it's really simple to kind of get to where I'm at now because I went home and. Uh, I like to joke that it was Groundhog's Day because I, yeah. I had a direction of what I wanted to do. I kept doing it. I kept doing it. Um, I had some like success, um, like on Instagram, obviously, and mm-hmm. and I like recognized the success and I kept going with it and going with it. And uh, well, you know, the next two years or so, uh, I had just been I just stayed home and I worked every day on, on building my own business. And now we're here. That's really it. That, that's uh, yeah. quick part. So I mean, it, it literally. So about a year went by without us having any contact, well, like contact, but not seeing yeah. each other. And it yeah. literally felt like for, for both of us, cause like we were helping to build that company, you were doing your own stuff and it was like, boom, boom. Okay. Hey, what's up? How's it yeah. been? Cool. It was like nothing changed. It's one of those things you like go back to friends that you haven't seen for a long time. And you're like, yeah. everything's the same. No, I remember we sat down for whenever I came down to visit that, that summer um, after like it was a year since I was gone, we like sat down to eat sushi. And we yeah. were all just like sitting there. And we we're like, "This is weird." And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even leave. And it felt uh, even more weird for me because I had literally, I had not. I mean, I went back to my hometown where there were like three thousand people. I was living in my mom's, you know, in, in her house, and it was just like me and then every day working. Yeah. It was the same day every single day, and like it flew by because yeah. I was never. I mean, there's no. I mean. It, obviously that worked well for me, but it's just weird thinking about that. Cause I think that played into why it felt like nothing was really that different yeah. because honestly, it's like I went home and just was in this simulation and then I came back. <laughs> I mean, dude, but it's the same thing when it comes to like literally anything that you really want to do consistency. Yeah. And so like you were like, this will work. And like, so like the algorithms, like they favor that, like a lot of yeah. people like wonder how to crack all the algorithms. And a lot of times it's like the algorithms will like you if you continue to like them. 
Yeah. And so as long as you're not like trying to do some black hat thing or like do whatever. Yeah. And so every single day you did that with diet, it's the same. It's like every single yeah. day do your thing. And then a year from now, you're going to be like, did I just get shredded? Yeah, exactly. Right. I think that that is like one of the, like the magic keys of anything in life is really just consistency, right? It's just mm-hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over again and not What's getting, the, you know, off you track. Always say, uh, uh, what is it? Macro. Oh, it's a, it's a Gary, a Gary Vaynerchuk quote, but he says a macro, uh, it's macro, macro patience, micro speed. Yeah. So the whole idea is like, you know, you have to have patience for where you're wanting to go in the future, but you have to be willing to just in the short term, in the micro, right? The day to day, just going, right? Going, going, going and not getting caught up yeah. in this, in this long-term thing because um, it's just going to require the repetition. So. So now I have like a Carter in my ear whenever I'm doing something, I'm like, it's not going to work. It's like mm-hmm. macro patience, micro speed. Yeah. It's actually like, my voice. What? And then you turn to your right and I'm actually standing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got to go. Flight in 20. <laughs> I, throw a, I throw a smoke bomb down. They disappear. <laughs> but so, okay. So that's where we met. Carter now is the king of fitness infographics. I'm putting I would say Overlord. Words. Overlord is the Overlord. Um, back term. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> I like Overlord better too. Because then what is, yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, the infographics you do coaching and Carter is a wonderful clientele. He's uh, you love coaching. I mean, that was, that's yeah. why, that's why you left originally. So like, have you been getting out of coaching what you left to do it for? Um, I think absolutely. And, and the thing about it is, and it's what, honestly why I love coaching in any form is, you know, I, I know that there are, a lot of people who, who struggle with, but be it their weight, be it their business, be it all these things where, you know, they know the answers, mm-hmm. but the problem is not the information. It's applying the information. Yes. And, and, and for most people, it's a matter of figuring out how they can apply the information into the life that they're already living. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's really where people have the issue. It's the, it's the resistance that's caused from their day-to-day life. Right. And the things that have built up. And so with coaching, the reason I love it is it allows me to really, um, get in with each person, right? Like, like yeah. you can know each person individually um, because, you know, two clients aren't going to be the same. What I do with one client might be different from the other, even though everyone who's wanting to lose. So like I, I do a lot, obviously a lot of fat loss coaching. And so everyone I'm working with needs to be eating fewer calories. needs to be making better food choices, needs to be exercising more. Right. But how exactly you get there is going to be different person to person. Right. Um, and, and that's really why I like it because I think that the more you can, uh, you know, really it's, it's, it's about just focusing on the, the you kind of talked about this recently in some of your content, the, um, mm-hmm. Parento's principle. Yeah. Uh, Parento's principle, the 80 Yeah. So, so yeah. So 20% of, of what you do with your health and fitness is going to get you 80% of your results, right? Always. 20% is like, you know, the calories, the macronutrient distribution, the food choices you're making, right? Exercise. That's like the 20% that gets you yeah. most of your results. It's um, one of those standard deviation curves where like, it's just yes, lots. Yeah. Yeah. And so really, I think that the goal should be understanding those basic things. And then really most of your attention should be put into how you're applying them, right? How you're getting them done in your day-to-day life. And that's where I like coaching because you're able to really help people identify their unique issues and build habits and strategies around them so that they can build their own confidence in their mm-hmm. own plan. So, Yeah, totally. And like a lot of people are like, I'll do it myself. And like, yeah, you can do it yourself. That is the sure, yeah. way. But when we used to talk, because uh, uh, we have a cryptocurrency thing. And a while back we were talking about money and just like what it's used for. And money is a tool and everybody, I know your whole thing was like freedom. Money gets yeah. you freedom and then you don't think about it because that's not what it's for. The same goes with in anything. We were talking about the hero's journey. You're like the wise old wizard with the coaching mm-hmm. where it's like, Hey, how do I get here? How do I do this? Even if you know, like he knew he just brings a ring to uh, what, uh, Man, I don't know where the rings at all. Yeah, to Mordor. To Mordor. So you bring the ring to Mordor, you drop it in. But he still had to have someone show him and coach him and guide him on the way. You could use a tool for anything. You and a tool can come about as anything. And right now it's you for coaching and you get to have that personal element. And so yeah, that's awesome. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And not only do I like love the the art of coaching, but also it helps that it's in an area that 
um, I have a lot of empathy because, mm-hmm. you know, having my own journey, right. And, and having done a lot of things, right. And, but mostly doing a lot of things wrong allows yeah. me to sort of identify where people are at in their journey. Right. Um, and, and then be able to give them the right guidance for where they're at. Right. Yeah. And it translates to so many things. Yeah. I mean, the more that, like, if you help them with diet and you understand like moderation and then they're like, Hey, I could use moderation with literally everything. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. These major, major concepts. Um, mm-hmm. so what are you still working on the program? Is that in the works? Yeah. So, um, at this point, really my thing is, um, so sort of like what you talked about. So, so like from like a, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take it more from like a, first I'll take it from like an application standpoint. Yeah. So the reason I, I, I love coaching first is mostly because I think that for the people who I reach out to, that's mm-hmm. where they need the most help, right? So I have all this free content and then there's the group of people that know that they need more guidance, right? Or, or be it accountability, be it actual like support with their own life, right? And take having someone take a look into what they're doing and, and really help them. Um, and so that there, there's kind of been those two balances, right? Um, and now I'm looking more into like just creating a program that's literally based around just, Hey, here's stuff that you can go do. It's actually just going to be an actual workout program. Right. Um, it's gonna be super simple and it's gonna be, that's all it is. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I'm excited about it because like the marketing for it or whatever, like the selling of the program is going to be so yeah. like, stu- it's going to be literally what it is. I'm like, listen, this is a workout program and that's all it is. Yeah. Like you can like this, that's, you're just, it's just like, you're buying this thing for convenience. Honestly, it's buying yeah. for convenience because this thing's is. already created for you. And, and that's kind of like maybe one, I feel like with that, that cr- is going to create a tier where I can kind of hit people with where they're at. Cause I have a lot of yeah. people who the free information, I mean, I get messages all day from people who say I lost 30 pounds in the last few months following your free advice. Awesome. Right. I've had yeah. clients who've had awesome success too. And then there's that middle group of people who say like, yeah, I don't, I can't, I don't really want to, you know, I can't really afford one-on-one coaching. And I don't necessarily need it, but um, I also don't have time to like do all this research and learn yeah. all this stuff. And yeah. it'd be awesome to have a more actionable plan. So that's kind of the thinking with the course is it kind of fits. Now I have like those three Dude, groups of people perfect. and that have some of the point to. So that, that's kind of where I'm at with that. So I mean, also like you can't, you can only get to a certain amount of coaching clients before yeah. it's like, what's your name again? Like, who am I dealing yeah. with? How does all this work? Whereas then like, okay, well, this program is quick, concise. And like, if you have the know-how and you really want to learn, because like typically people who buy programs are people who like really want to learn yeah. and you're good because exactly yeah. that person's going to be like, they're just, they just want to know what to do and you're giving it in yeah. an easy, good way. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped for it. I'm, I'm pumped to get it out. And I think that once it's out, because like you said, you know, with, with coaching, as much as I love it, you know, there is a natural limit to it. And so I think this is a way to be able to, um, help people on a little bit of a deeper level than like, you know, just set, giving general, it's, it's, it's going to be more, uh, directed advice yes. for a larger group of people, I guess. Right. Cause with, yeah. with, with, whenever you're talking to masses, you kind of have to speak generally about things. And yeah. so with this course, like it's, it's going to be for a specific person wanting to do a specific thing. Right. So it's not going to be for everybody. It'll be for those people who really mm-hmm. need that one thing. And I've kind of, I, in the direction of the course is sort of for, that's where I see most people who reach out for advice are at, right? Are yeah. in this situation where they, they need some um, advice with this one area. So I'm Plus, hoping that really helps. I mean, you give so much advice on, on Instagram about nutrition. Dude, yeah. you could honestly, and I think this would be awesome at one point to make like one of those rings with like your Instagram posts and like the front is the post, the back is the text of like yeah, the like, lesson. Like the, like, a, like with like the, yeah. Yeah, I thought about that. I've actually even thought about printing off all my Instagram posts and like creating yeah. a booklet. And like, whenever I, like, if I work start working with a new client, I think they get a care package yeah. and they get this booklet. Um, even a database. That, would, yeah, that's what I was thinking. On your website, you search pizza yeah. and like every salad photo comes up and you're like, ah, oh, I don't yeah. know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've thought about doing that just because like with Instagram, one of the things with this is like, there's not like a, a backlog of, yeah. of images. So I've actually thought about uploading, like it's just the time to do that. It's just, you gotta go in, probably just pay someone to do it cause it'd be super simple, but like going into my posts and like yeah. making literally a blog post for every single post I've created. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, they're, they're all, I mean, I max Dude, out the captions. You're on writing a blog post. Yeah. You're already so it's writing. Like, it's like a 400 word blog post. Which is more than, okay. So we, we Quick refresher, when we used to work together, we were more on the back end of fitness yeah. stuff. So we learned all the, the terms and everything, but SEO, search engine optimization, 300 words is all you need. 400 words, yeah. Google loves it. It's indexing. I mean, of course yeah. they love it. 
people like drawn out articles, although attention's getting smaller and smaller. It's like you can barely talk to someone nowadays. But besides that, I yeah. think, I mean, I think it's perfect. Yeah. I don't, if I do that though, I'm going to be, I'm so OCD because like I'm always kind of upgrading and changing my design a bit. Yeah. I would have to go through, I don't know if I, I'd have, I'd go back like three months and be like, why did I do that with that design? Well, the, the that works. I'm going to have to change it. And then, yeah, we'll talk later. Cause I think I yeah. know how you could do it where it'd be pretty easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So what do you think? And uh, a high leverage skill is something like, breathing learning to learn something that like helps you accelerate you can learn it in one thing and it applies to so many different areas what do you think is one of those skills that has really helped you with setting up your either your instagram your coaching or just the mindset altogether behind getting all this the hustle mentality blah 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 you mm -hmm. know i think the thing that has um kind of revolutionized all areas of my life that I've, I've actually learned through like Instagram and, and through SEO with like through building a business is um, understanding the practicality of failure um, in, in terms of like I, you know, far too often the biggest issue that I think people have is not the, not their successes but their failures I think that's what yeah. separates people who you know excel in things and then you know don't end up accomplishing anything is because they let either a failure or um, a fork in the road or whatever, stop them from moving forward. And, and the reality is that life is going to be full of making mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. It's what always happens. And it, and it seems so silly to me because everything in life anyone's ever done, they've mess, mess, made mistakes with mm -hmm. they like math problems in, in high school or whenever they tried to learn an instrument, right? They're hitting Dude, wrong notes all nuclear day. Nuclear reactors blow up. Yeah, seriously. Think Mistakes happen, okay? Yeah. It happens. <laughs> and, and so like, but it, it just seems so weird to me that even though the magnitude can change maybe with like how severe a mistake is, the reality is that anytime you make a mistake, you are figuring out a way how not to do something, yes. right? Like that, that's so important to understand. And it's hard to understand because people want to be perfect. People don't want to make mistakes. They don't want to look yep. stupid or anything, but the more that you can, you know, utilize those mistakes um, or, or learn from them, yeah. that's how you're going to grow in the future. And honestly, I think that it's a failure is a good thing. Like you should on, you should actively try to fail. It's actually here. This is my, um, right here is my, uh, my screensaver. It, oh. says, you can see it. it says work hard, fail big. Yeah. Because that's dude. I go to the casino all the time and I put all my money down. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just lose it all. Yeah. But, um, like, but yeah. that's my thing new, is like new lesson. Yeah, is exactly. Right. Like, cause it, it's, you know, you're going to fail no matter what. And I think that if you can phrase it in a way to where, you know, if you do fail, instead of beating yourself up or, you know, just quitting altogether, you, you recognize what went wrong, mm -hmm. maybe try to change it so it doesn't happen again, but then use it and, and keep moving forward. That's how you um, become an, a master of things, right? Like that's how you master yeah. different skills and, and everything. So that's, that would probably be, um, I'm not really sure if that's like a, a skill that you learn, but maybe I, more of like a, a I think it I is think, a skill because you, yeah. you have to get outside of your mind because every time you fail, you're going to be upset about it. Yeah. So you have to be able to look past it. And I think that can apply to everything in life, literally being able yeah. to get that mindset. I'm, I just filmed a video actually about um, fear and like this, like yeah. Yeah, most fear is a logical fear. You're not being chased by a lion. I don't even know if like people always say you would be chased by a lion. How often was someone chased by a lion? That's the first I don't even thing know. that I lions know. were there. Yeah. Cause I don't think like you would like go out in the forest and there's like 500 people running from all these lions and you're like, shit, yeah. I'm not doing that today. Yeah. Um, but like fear is so, it can be one of those mental ties where mm -hmm. it's like, as soon as you do, I know Mel Robbins talks about, uh, the five second rule, which is like, just at the end of five second countdown, do right away. And you build that reflex. But mm -hmm. I think the skill that you're going with is just like, it's both like learning from failure, but it's embracing it. I mean, when you can yeah. embrace negative, like what we perceive as a negative thing, that's like one of the highest skills, the highest leverage skills you could ever have, because then nothing is bad. It's just different. And then you learn from it. Exactly. And I think that's huge. And it, it goes against like everything that we're kind of taught growing up and, and, and whatever. And it's scary. And it, it, it all comes back to, I think it's just a social thing, right? Yeah. I'm not wanting to look dumb, not wanting to appear like you're not smart or don't know anything. Right. 
and, and that can cripple people. Right. And, and even me, I mean, to this day, like, I mean, with, with Instagram, you know, I have like so many people following me, like I, it, last night I, I posted about, um, the ketogenic diet, right. And yeah. my views on it. And even in posting that, like I had fear because I'm like, you know, what happens if like some, somebody yeah. comes on there and like says something that maybe I've never heard of, I don't even know. Right. Or challenges me on things. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things. And that's even plays into another big, like higher leverage skill, I guess that can apply to you is, is never being dishonest about what you know. Yeah. Intellectual it's, honesty. It's, it's, that's it. Right. And, and if you don't know an answer yeah. to something like say, I don't know. Right. And be willing to learn. I think that's huge. Um, Dude, not wonderful. even just, yeah, not even just social, like, like, outwardly like to express that to people and to like tell people when you don't know but yeah. tell your being honest with yourself yeah so, i don't understand this right and there are a lot of things that in life now that i've done that like i move more towards and i'm like wow i don't really understand this and and then at that yeah. point it's my decision is it worth it to know it or or, or not but um, just being honest with yourself and, and with how you present yourself that's literally yeah. i think one of the hardest things for and so like this happens with and i know this is why for a little bit you were a little hesitant with a big company with who were like with just like growing too big because you get like confined to these boxes a lot of times unless you yeah. start out with like hey we're gonna be navigating based on like new research or like what comes out what we actually are learning a lot of these companies like the error in them is because of the fact that they have to be x like yeah. yeah, we're just this. And then it's like that gets disproven. And it's like, they're fighting back. I was listening to um, a video yesterday, and he was talking about organic versus non organic. And mm -hmm. he was talking about how most of the studies that show not or organic isn't much different is a crop like Dole or someone that has an organic farm, and they have a non organic farm. And of course, they're next to each other because Dole's not going to waste money, whoever it is. And they test their organic farm versus their non organic farm and then yeah. give you those differences. They don't test it against like something that's like an actual good farm, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's so much of it. Yeah. It's, that's one of the, one of the biggest things. So what do you question right now? That's one of my favorite things. So, you know, question everything. What's like one huge thing it could be in fitness. It could be in life, politics, world, whatever. We could go super, we could, you know, just grungy. doesn't matter. Yeah whatever you want. Oh, man. Okay. All right. What's one thing I question? I, I don't want to, I don't want to like go the wrong direction with this, but I can, I guess it's something that I've been thinking about more and more and more now that mm -hmm. like with my business has been growing and stuff. So one thing I question is what does everything I'm doing? What does like, honestly, so I guess this is going really big. Yeah. Uh, what does like my life look like 10, 10 years from now? Like what yeah. is all this, what, what's happening in 10 years? Because you see all these advances and all these predictions about where things are going. Right. And then what's going to happen in both with jobs and with technology and with um, information and, and everything. And I'm just like, it, it's honestly, it's like a, and it's something that you, you almost can't think of because if you keep thinking that way, you're just going to cripple yourself um, yeah. because there's nothing you can do about it right now. But that's probably my biggest thing right now is sort of maybe, Pay, like, like trying to figure out what's my path right mm -hmm. um knowing that there's going to be all this stuff happening like where do i want to see myself right and trying to have a like a my own mission right yeah. setting more of a hard mission of where do i want to see myself and so that's actually something that i'm continuing to question myself okay. on because i'm not necessarily yeah. sure what it is Dude, right i know awesome what i'm doing now. right now but I, I'm, i've been thinking more and more about where yeah. i want to see myself 10 years from now 20 years from now 30 years from now kind of thing yeah like what's the purpose what's the overall yeah Dude, that's I mean, that's something I think about so much. And like, I have, you know, I have my loose one, which is like help a hundred million people in mm -hmm. a few certain fields, but I agree. That's, we always want to plan for five or 10 years, but like technology, look at technology 10 years ago. Like no one knows what's going to go on. I almost see it as like the way to win is uh, if you watch the Incredibles, mm -hmm. where's my super suit? When yeah. he would spray the ice in front of him and then get on it. Like he's spraying before he gets there. Like yeah. everything's going before you get there. You just got to slide, like make sure you're on the same track. Yeah. And so I like agree. Yeah. the people who don't want to adjust to new technologies or do stuff like that's fine. But if you want to do it easily, just go into it right away because then you'll be at the forefront. You'll always be, you know, yeah, yeah. I agree. 
it's and it's I like and I like what you just said about how like ten years ago, nothing like ten years ago. If you, I mean, if ten years ago you showed me this crazy iPhone X, I'd be just shit in my pants, right? Yeah. I think that now that actually encourages me though, because whenever now I'm thinking about it, it doesn't seem like it was that crazy to go no, through it, right? But it's, it never it's, is. It's because going through it is so much. Because I, I think that as humans, it, it kind of plays into like how lost we can get in time and yes. how we get so because we live our lives in the time that we know of like minutes hours days anytime we get outside of it to where we're thinking about the future and like we can't really perceive time as well yeah we don't know what it's like to live in years we know it's like living minutes and it gets it gets overwhelming and that's when fear creeps in because it's fear of the unknown right um but once you realize that no matter what i mean obviously maybe this changes i don't know but uh (laughs) so far it looks like time the way time moves isn't going to change on us or how we perceive it isn't going to change um but you know I would combat that because I would say, I would say chronological time is always the same, but Mm -hmm. perceived time. So like experiential, because like, that's the thing, right? You have, I, I always remember those minutes, like a minute where it feels like an hour because like something was going wrong or something was amazing or like Groundhog's Day where you're like two years, you're just like, boom, 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 boom. And then Oh my God, two years went by. It worked. I think we will experience all the future because I know me and you like to talk, you like to talk about like um, not getting too much tied up in the futuristic stuff. I like to dive in full and I like it. I just know if I do it, it just, I, it always goes, <laughs> it's just like, it cripples me. Cause I'm just like, cause then I just think about things yeah. that are without my control and they get pressure. Like, and then AI comes and then there's AI Carter. How am I going to pay AI Carter? And it then, always <laughs> it always ends up with me. I don't know how all the scenarios always end up with me becoming like some robot sex slave or something. <laughs> I don't know why. It always ends that way. This is why I stay out of it. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's okay. Uh, so no, yeah, but totally. I mean, I think yeah. we will live through that, meaning it's gonna be second nature. It's like a phone, like we weren't like phones and then like everybody huddled around like the fire and like batted at the phone. It was just yeah. like, oh, phone, cool. Oh, new phone, cool. Oh, awesome, yeah. another phone. And then now you're like, hey, what's going on? And then you're like, unlock. And next yeah. you're like, phone, go get me groceries. And the phone like yeah. off and goes get you some groceries. It's like this weird yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, and so I think it's that, that's where I like, and I love your idea. I, that's actually a really good analogy of like the ice thing because it's, it's a willingness to – to be uncomfortable with change or to be comfortable with change and yes. to a degree to where, you know, it, it, and I think that if you can do that, like you can be, it can become comfortable. Right. Cause I think it's hard to, if you, if you're like, I'm someone who loves comfort and I love predictability. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, honestly, that's part of the reason why. So this is a great example. So like people who are listening to this, um, you know, in the last couple of months, you and I, and the two other guys, we were been traveling a little yeah. bit. Right. Yeah. And I knew going into that, like, like the anxiety, like it, it was one of those moments in my life where I was able to really like look at, yeah. be able to like feel, feel things in the moment, but then also be able to look at myself and see how ridiculous those feelings were. Yeah. Like, like the anxiety I was getting before I got on the plane to like go to whenever we went to Denver for a month, right? Yeah. The anxiety I got before getting on that plane was ridiculous. And it was like so absurd. I'm like, why am I feeling this way? And I know it's because. I knew there were going to be all these new experiences and all these yep. new things I needed, I was going to do. And I, even there, I think that it crippled me to an extent um, with allowing myself to get into a routine. Now, I think I'll also say that um, being in the nature yeah. that I, I'm in this, I'm, everything is changing so rapidly with my business right now. Yep. There was just all these changes happening in all these areas. It's like, I think I, I, I do think that it's okay to have some type of stability in, in some area of your life. Yeah. Um, but just that that was a great though contrast for me because I had spent two years like same thing every single day even though to me it didn't feel like it because there was all these things changing in my business so then once I got in this environment where like oh now I'm hanging out with with these people again and I'm going to these places and all these new experiences right it was like one of those things where I was like I was fried right it was was crazy so um I mean for all of us though it was adjustment when you go somewhere new and you were trying to do so what we were doing we were moving every 30 days it's hard. Like, yeah. it sounds fun. It sounds like it's going to be the best until you learn the practical. How am I going to do this? Where is this located? Oh, yeah. okay. Now there's we nine. Spent so much time doing the logistical oh, yeah. stuff. And, and the only issue was, I think that makes, 
that would have been awesome if we were all like, we just had like this repetitive yeah. thing that we were doing with our businesses. We're also all starting our own businesses and all yeah. growing our own businesses. Yeah. So there's just unknowns on top of unknowns on top of unknowns. Yeah. Trent like, gets I was, approached by that modeling guy. We're like, Trent, don't move to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Trent's like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I'm still mad he didn't choose me. I know. So, okay. So quick story. We're walking in uh, Boulder. No, yeah. Boulder. No, we were in Denver. It was Denver. like, um, how am I yeah. spacing? And we're yeah. coming back from this coffee shop. Me and Trent, uh, Trent McCloskey split left. Carter goes straight. I see this guy in his car and he's looking at both Carter and Trent back and forth, <laughs> back, and forth back and forth. I'm like, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Me and Trent keep walking down this street next thing i know this guy is parked on the side of the road in front of us outside of his car i didn't see him approach and he's just like hey do you guys know a good place to eat around here and then proceeds to pro- uh, to approach trent about modeling for his modeling <laughs> so it was one of the strangest interactions and carter did not get chosen he said he was trying to choose between carter and trent and he chose trent what if he just came up to? What if he in the in the other world he came up to me, but all he actually wanted to know was where a good place to eat was, and then he just left. <laughs> so Do you know where a good burger? He came up, he's like, "Oh, it changed my mind." Just <laughs> where? You're We're like far oh. away. You look great, but <laughs> close. It's like, oh man. Um, so I just want a good place to eat, and uh, I gotta go. I actually never yeah. mind. I gotta go. Yeah, please don't look at me as you leave. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was, but that was hilarious. So. Yeah, man, this is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna be coming out to Columbus soonish, and yeah. we'll do one of these in person. Yeah, we'll do one. Yeah, well, there's actually so once we'll we do get a off walking the, video. Yeah, like once we get off the recording, let's do. Um, there's actually a bunch of logistical stuff that we can we can talk yeah. about too. Um, because a lot of stuff has changed in the last couple of days, also. So um, awesome. we'll get into that. But yeah, dude, we need to do this again. We can, and I say we jump more into um, that what we were kind of talking about there at the end. All yeah. Of the, uh, the stories, uh, man. We or, or the stories, but also the um, the, the work, what's the future holding, right? Are oh, we yeah. cars? What's happening? Dude, we could what do a whole podcast even... on the future because I was so against what Carter's got in his ears right now. Those little two Bluetooth <laughs> receivers for the yeah. longest time, and I eventually caved. I got some Sure wireless headphones, but you're, you're... Dude, it's because I broke my. Okay, I have the worst luck with headphones ever at the gym. Anytime I'm in a handstand, I end up breaking my headphones yeah. if they're attached to my phone. So like the other day I'm there and of course I clip it to my shirt just so something doesn't happen like that, but it happened. Mm. And I'm in the handstand and I like am coming down. Somehow the phone drops perfectly perpendicular. It hits just the little nub where the headphone connects to the phone <laughs> and that snaps in half. And that was like my third pair that I've lost in like the past two months. So I'm like, <laughs> I just got to go wireless because this is not conducive to <laughs> cost effectiveness, but also like, I mean, I'm moving around the gym in like the weirdest ways possible. My phone's like getting thrown across the whole room. I'm like, okay, I just, <laughs> just get a change. Dude, I'm, I've, I've sold, like I, I'm waiting for my affiliate paycheck from Apple because I have sold these AirPods I've sold so many cut pairs to people. Apple, it's not a cheap that? product. I guess no. yeah, seriously, they, I, I need I need my my you know reimbursement you, or whatever. You my, could be in one of those commercials, just like shave your beard all weird, and you like because they're looking for like people who look normal but kind of not normal now. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Oh yeah, so like, yeah. We'll just like do like super weird haircut and like something. You'll wear like your clothes backwards, and then you'll be a sponsor. Easy. That's it. That's, That's it. I, I do, I'll do it, man. I'm I'm all about them. I'm, I'll, I can never live without them again. They're they're like my favorite thing. I'm. It's just a matter of time. I made a joke about this on the other podcast that yeah. um, I'm on with my friend Josiah. It's like it, in ten years, whenever Apple comes out with its new program, it's going to be called the Apple Plug. Yeah. And it's literally just going to be this thing that you stick in the back of your head. And like I'm going to be the first one there. I'm like, all right, stick me in. I'm ready. To get, put me in the Apple. Okay. Matrix. I'm I'm there. How do you know that you're already yeah. not there? I'm, I'm seriously, that's like, why, it's just a matter of why am I talking right now? I'm in the Samsung matrix. You're in the Apple matrix. And what's happening is the matrixes are fighting. Yeah. We're going to be so eventually. It. <laughs> it's oh, going to be it's gonna be like that episode of SpongeBob. You know, talk about with the chum bucket where they put the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. talk about the head, the helmets go over and they're all being controlled. That's yeah. going to be us with our headphones. One day everyone's just going to activate and they're going to like turn red. 
and then we're just like starting to fight each other. I can't wait till like uh, they can start selling stuff like that. Like with Kanye's newest song where he's like poopity scoopity loop. Like how like everybody loves it. Like, dude, I actually like the song. I can't like deny it. I listen to it all the time and it cracks me up and I'm in a better mood. But we could do that with so many things. Like people don't realize the sway. Like Mm -hmm. if Kim Kardashian comes out with like some new like weird like um uh not prosthetic leg, what's it when you sprain your ankle, like cast and like wears a cast around, I guarantee we start seeing people wear casts around. Oh yeah, just just cause. Yeah. So, I'm waiting for the chum buckets. If you want to start that, we could start that. Get some. I don't want to start it at all. I don't want it to be a thing. But we'll start start dropping. Though it's just a slow burn. It's slow burn. It starts with these. I love the shirts. I just can't. So I do yoga in the sauna now. I think I'm melting the earbuds. I just I don't know what I. That's like accelerating the process of it becoming just a part of your body. I know. Just melting it on. I haven't been body. able to take them out for the past week. They're just stuck in there. <laughs> I had to order their special solvent. <laughs> oh, oh my uh, gosh! You're talking to support, and they're in yeah. your ears. <laughs> hey, so yeah. you're stuck inside of me, uh, and I yeah. can't. There's no buttons anymore, so I can't turn this off. Can you hang up? Yeah. And if you hang up, it might like it's, yeah. You're like the last, and I can't hear anything either. So please don't hang up. <laughs> please keep talking to me. <laughs> awesome one. Help, give me help. But yeah, <laughs> awesome man. So yeah, dude, let's definitely let's talk about the future, uh, the elements of that. Yeah. I'm reading uh, Super Intelligence right now, so I'm gonna have a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Wherewithal, it's crazy. I don't know that stuff. Singularity is interesting, but yeah, awesome man. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys for listening. And uh, yeah, talk soon, man.